this the reason why y'all come here. The reason why you got that bell on and join that 10% gang. What up with the visionaries? Your favorite local, especially after I spoke. Check it out. So we basically got that paperwork too. And I read it to the best of my ability. It's real spotty and shoddy, bro. I done tried different filters and everything like that and blah, 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 blah. Y'all don't really care. But I'm about to do y'all a real solid with this video. So make sure you hit that like button, force us to the algorithms, give y'all something to talk about. I don't block, I don't delete nobody's stuff on the comments and everything like that because I really don't care because right now this is just a community page, it feels like. But with no further ado, we're going to get to that paperwork. Let's do it. So be aware, be aware. Man, this paperwork is real sketchy, meaning that it's messed up and everything like that. So bear with me. Whatever words I don't use or anything like that, if you know the words, cool, but I can't see it. So everything I'm seeing on the screen is exactly what you guys are seeing. So I'll probably make it up on the way, but let's go. On January 14th, 2015, Atlanta police responded to 330 McDaniel Street, Atlanta. I don't even know what that says. Fulton County, Georgia to, I'm assuming, whatever the hell. To shots fired from a, I don't know what it is. I just see vehicle upon a ride. Officers noticed three victims who had sustained gunshot wounds. Those three individuals were transported to Grady Hospital where the defendant, Donovan Thomas Jr., was pronounced deceased by the Grady Hospital attending physician from a fatal gunshot wound the two other individuals were treated and later released the incident was investigated by the atlanta police department homicide unit and then subsequently investigated by the deputy district attorney michael spinel spinkle i don't know what Kel's name is with fulton county district attorney's office through his investigation dda sprinkle or what is it? Sprinknell advised of the following. The suspects fired their weapons from a silver infinity rented by Jeffrey Williams, also known as Young Thug. As it passed by the. What is that? I don't know. What the hell? Affirmation. I'm assuming that's what it is. By the affirmation address where Thomas stood. DDA Sprinknell or Sprinkle. I'm calling Cuz Sprinkle. That's what I'm rocking with. If that ain't it, then y'all can help me out in the comments. Was able to locate and confirm the sign rental agreement between Hertz Car Rental and Jeffrey Williams, a.k.a. Young Thug, DDA Sprinkle, obtained records from the Hertz Corporate, which revealed that Williams rented the 2014 Infinity Q50 on January 7, 2015. Williams applied his signature to the rental contract, which matched the signature on Fulton County indictment. 145C125405, to which he pled no contest to a possession of a controlled substance charge. Oh, so, ooh, we, all right. Williams and the shooting suspects are, were members of the Young Slime Life YSL Street Gang. Williams is one of the founding members of the YSL Criminal Street Gang, Donovan Thomas Jr., who is the victim was a high-ranking member of the Inglewood Family Street Gang. Multiple witnesses report said Williams at a gas station near where the homicide occurred just minutes after the shooting, as well as said Williams at a residential area immediately after the shooting. Right after it occurred, using cellular data obtained and prior search warrants by ADA, Sprinkle, multiple suspects, and known gang members called Williams' phone in the house in minutes leading up to the shooting, and the hours and minutes preceding the shooting. Using the same data, multiple suspects and known gang members were found to be leaving the general area of the shooting and relocating to Williams' residence in Midtown Atlanta. Right after the shooting, multiple suspects, persons of interest, and known gang members stated Williams was aware of the shooting and orchestrated it. Kenneth Copeland one of the eyewitnesses and close associates of Williams stated he was with Williams when he rented the car using the shooting 
and advised he knew it was one of the suspects used in the drive-by shooting. Kenneth Copeland stated he was in the parking lot of a McDonald's immediately following the shooting. This McDonald's located on Old Hapeville Road in Cleveland Avenue, Atlanta. Kenneth Copeland says he observed Williams driving his personal car, a white Jeep, pulled into the parking lot and observed Dan Keon Garland, Demise McCullen, Shannon Jackson, Demonte Kendricks, Garlington, exited Williams' car and entered Copeland's vehicle and told him they just killed Nut. According to the remaining occupants with Williams, multiple witnesses state immediately after shooting, after the shooting, pardon me, Williams and the suspected shooting, I, I can't make that out, can Williams con, condo located at, oh, so I'm assuming Williams and the suspected associates went to meet at Williams condo located in Midtown neighborhood of Atlanta. The suspects then parked the cars, uh, packed their cars and belongings, and fled to Miami, Florida. So Nard, Scarface, Yak Gotti, all those individuals, they all wrapped into this and everything like that, bro. Let me tell y'all something. I find it real odd. I always question timing. Always timing. Then on top of that, the officer that y'all seen, Kenneth Copeland. Oh, let me reintroduce yourself. His name is Colt. Out of a story you're going to see only on WSB tonight. A former officer accused of trying to help get a gang member back onto the streets. Police say the pair was in a relationship. Now that officer is facing several felonies. Channel 2's Michael Seiden broke the story tonight. He joins us live now from the city of South Fulton. Michael, that officer is out of jail tonight, but she now has her own court battle to deal with. Yeah, no question, George. You know, our colleague, Taisha Fernandez, and myself, we have been working this, talking to our sources, and today we finally got our hands on new court documents that really read like a Hollywood script. In fact, earlier tonight, I spoke with an off-duty officer here who told me that the entire department is just stunned by these allegations. She's the former city of South Fulton police officer accused of abusing her badge to protect her boyfriend. Investigators say 27 year old Aaliyah Jackson, who joined the city's police force in 2019, was booked into jail last month on felony charges after she tried to interfere with a major police operation targeting Metro Atlanta's most notorious drug dealers and gang members. Among the suspects, Jackson's boyfriend, Kenneth Copeland, a convicted felon and documented gang member who served time in federal prison in 2018. Right now, it's unclear how long the two have been in a relationship, but police arrested Copeland on October 27th after they say he was caught driving in his girlfriend's car with a loaded gun inside. Following his arrest, police say that Jackson tried to delete her boyfriend's Instagram page containing photos of gang activity. She's also accused of trying to disable his phone, which police were storing as evidence. On Wednesday night, we stopped by the East Point apartment complex where Jackson resides, hoping to get her side of the story, but she didn't pick up our call. It is an embarrassment to us all, certainly is an embarrassment to the community. Dr. Cedric Alexander is the former DeKalb County Public Safety Commissioner, who now serves as a national expert on law enforcement in America. He says despite the criminal allegations, this incident should not cast any this favor over the thousands of other officers right there in your community in Metro Atlanta who are doing an outstanding job and understand the importance of maintaining the distance between themselves and those that are involved in criminal activity. Channel 2's Michael Seiden joining us live again. Strong words there. Michael, question for you tonight. South Fulton Police Chief Keith Meadows talking about the allegations against his former officer. Yeah, George, he sent us a statement basically saying that they will not stand for this kind of behavior, that they hold their officers to the highest standard. They also told us that she was placed on administrative leave, and as soon as that happened, she did resign from her position, and then two days later, she was arrested and charged with those felonies. George? A lot left on this one. Michael Seiden reporting live for us. Man, this get deeper than the ocean, bro. This get real deeper than the ocean, man. Uh... All due respect to everybody involved. This bad. 
Y'all comment your thoughts. Let me know what's going on. I'll catch y'all at the live stream tonight. We will be going live tonight. I'll catch y'all there. Seti Nash, Visionaries. Y'all expect me to keep it real? Because you know that I will. I do this daily, baby. Check out the Nightly Nash podcast. Also, Street of Music, Seti Nash, if you have not. It's on all streaming platforms. Guaranteed you're going to find something you like. Probably like that overly thugging freestyle. Or maybe... Something different. Let me know in the comments. We possibly shoot that music video.